This is amazing. To talk about women as though we don't know anything about it, and we have a surah called An Nisa, the women. Huh? They don't have anything like that in any of their books, but we have a book right here that has the, about women and how to treat them. I just read to you. And to talk about divorce, and we have a surah, a chapter called Divorce. Uh, talak. How can people come and tell us our religion and they don't even know what we have? You want me to tell you the answer to that one? Because we don't pay attention to our own religion. This is a ayib. It's a shame on us that we don't take care of our own religion. But that's why we came to these conferences, so I can learn, you can learn, we can all share together. Coming back to the subject of divorce. If a man pronounces a triple divorce all at the same time, a lot of the scholars consider it as still as only one pronouncement. Now we come to the next little item up here. Same surah, chapter 4. We're in still the same place, talking about 34. It's a big surah, a big ayah in the surah, big verse. And it's talking about the man being over the woman in what his ability and his means Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient and they guard in their husband's absence what Allah guard, uh, orders them to guard. A lot of men read that to say, therefore, women obey their husbands. But that's not what it says. That's what you wanted to hear. You wanted to hear that. You got to obey me. When did you become a law? And what's the famous statement in Islam? There is no obedience to the creation if it's disobedience to Allah. Hello. What it says, there's no period. It continues. It said, therefore, righteous women are devoutly obedient and they guard in their husband's absence what Allah orders them to guard. Obedient to Allah to guard what Allah has ordered them to guard while their husbands are away, which is her chastity, meaning her private parts, and to guard whatever's of the house while, they're not, while he's not there. In other words, the property and so on. She's responsible, don't walk away and leave the door open, in other words. Whoa. Now the brothers are really getting upset with me. They say, why did I bring my wife to this? I could have left her home today. <laughs> I'm getting in deeper trouble first, my money, and now she, now you won't listen to me anymore? Oh, my God. Well, we're not done. We're coming up on some part you can fall back on, and it says, And as to those women whose part you see illicit conduct, admonish them. Admonish means, hey, don't do that anymore. That's called admonishment. You know, screaming is not admonishment. Just, hey, that's wrong. Don't do that. Okay? Number one. Number two, refuse to share the beds with them and then beat them. Oh, good, I get to beat them. Yay! Wait a minute. It's not over yet. But if they return to obedience, seek not against them any means of annoyance. Surely Allah is ever most high and most great. It said if they return to obedience. Obedience meaning to you or to Allah. The illicit conduct being spoken about here, Allah alam. Of course, we always say it's Allah who knows best quite obviously means that she was doing something not in Islam. As for instance, she's not praying when she's supposed to be praying, but she refuses. Or she's not fasting and she should be fasting. Or she's not paying her zakah and she should be paying zakah. Or she's not guarding the things that she's supposed to be guarding when you're not there, which Allah has just ordered her to do. In this case, that's what it's talking about. Obedience to Allah. And you, as her husband, naturally, she's looking up to you to take direction, and you're telling her what to do. 
But you're not commanding her around and stomping your feet and telling her what to do. And please, brothers, go back and look at the example of Prophet Muhammad, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because what he did is our example. How many times a day did he used to beat his wives? According to the media, it's like all the time. Does anybody know? How many times did he ever beat Khadija, radiallahu anha? Never. Never raised a finger to her. Didn't even raise his voice to her. In 25 years, never even spoke harshly to her. Now, Aisha, Zainab, Maryam, the cut, and all of the uh, wives that he had, did he ever beat them? Come on. He forbid it. He said, the best of you are the best to your wives, and I'm the best to my wives. And he said, and this is the real famous statement about beating women, he said, forbidding the men to beat their women, he said, how can you beat them like an animal in the day and then want to go to them like a wife at night? So this idea of beating women with a stick or a whip and all of the stuff they showed on TV is totally not, it's against Islam. It has no place in Islam whatsoever. And you should hate it. You shouldn't tolerate it. Regardless of who's doing it. Because it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. The beating in this verse was explained by Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And unless you're willing to take it on your shoulder to say that you're better to tell us what's in the Quran than he is. And I don't think you're ready to say that then you better listen to what he said about that. He gave the example when he took his tooth stick out of his pocket, which is about this big, and hit himself on the arm, and he said, that's all it is. Because it, according to Dr. Jamal Bedoui, this was the symbol of the third talaq. Now go back and look at it again. You admonish them. That this is a big warning. If you don't listen to what I say, we, we could be on the verge of a divorce here, lady, because you not praying is something that I can't deal with. You not fasting is something that I, that's not going to work. Second, she still hasn't listened to you. This means after a period of time. Inshallah. Then you refuse to share the bed with her. Now, that doesn't mean you move out to the hotel. That means you don't have intercourse with her. A woman knows, okay, if my husband's not doing that, he's pretty serious. He wants me to wake up. And that again is going to be time, because how do you refuse to share the bread with her for 18 minutes or something like that? I mean, you, you know, it's obvious this is going to be for some time. She still doesn't respond, so that's when the final comes, the tap with the miswack, if it's of a benefit, otherwise just divorce her. Because you don't need to be married to a lady that doesn't want to follow Islam. And if you're miserable, then let her go her way and you go your way. And be nice. Give her respect and don't talk about her after you're gone. Keep your mouth shut. This is the Prophet said, Let the one who believes in Allah in the last day either say good things or keep your mouth shut. That's Texas translation for Yasmut. Be silent. Now the question comes from the lady's side. I'm going to do your question for you. It says, Sheikh, what about the women? Can we do that to them if they don't obey a law? Can we admonish them? Can we refuse to share the bed with them? And can we hit them with a the two stick? The answer is, sisters, it's not equal, but it's fair. You don't have to do a three-stage deal. That's only for the men. When you're ready for a divorce, you just can get it. It's much easier for the woman to get a divorce than it is the man because she doesn't have to go through all the steps. She just goes over to the imam and says, guess what? I don't want to be married to this guy anymore. How many of you knew that? It's in the books. It's clear. When a woman wants a divorce, she went straight to the Prophet and she said, I can't stand to look at him. 